I, I remember last week we were in the wedding and the, the food was prepared. We were sitting on our tables. I think we were eight or ten on the tables. So we could have waited for one person to go there, grab the food, sit down, one person to go grab the food and sit down. But we just made the queue when I asked myself, is it really necessary? We, we, we could have waited and, and, and wait for someone to, to finish before we go there, but we just made the queue. But we, we, sometimes waiting is necessary. James, inspired by the Holy Spirit, in James chapter 5, he says, wait patiently. Wait patiently. But he doesn't just say wait, he says wait until the coming of the Lord. Until the coming of the Lord. We still going to wait, brothers. If you will be patient in waiting, please be patient until the coming of the Lord. That's what James says here. But in our lives as well, that there are things that we wait for. We wait for, for different things. One man said, patience is, is ability or is the attitude that we keep while we're waiting. The attitude that we keep while we're waiting. Because waiting is inevitable. So it is about the attitude that we keep while we're waiting. There are three mistakes that we do when we're waiting. The first thing that we do is that we complain. We complain. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, do everything without complaining or arguing. Do everything without complaining or arguing. At times when I'm waiting for, for students to pick up students there, I wait on the main road and it's not safe to, to wait there. And sometimes I complain that hey, that taking long you know, to come out. And I First of all, I shouldn't have waited there because that's on the main road. I should at least find a spot, a better spot to wait. Or the students could have been faster and waited for me there so that I don't have to wait. But what I do is that I, I'm, I'm not playing many of the students. <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is that it's unnecessary for me to, to complain because I'm waiting. Why wait and complain? The Israelites, they, they, they missed some of them, they missed an opportunity to get to the promised land because they complained while they were waiting for the promised land. That is in Numbers chapter 14, 27 to 30. Brother Matthew said that. Numbers chapter 14, verse 27 to 30. Are we going to die here? 
we could have died, we could have died in Egypt. Are there, are there no graves in Egypt that we should die here? You see that they, they are complaining, although the goal is just, it's just close, but they are complaining. And God said, all of them, they are going to die. All of them that they came out of Egypt, they are going to die, except these two, which is Caleb and, and Joshua. So you see that because of, of the complaints that, that we do in our lives, complaining to God about our lives, sometimes we miss on the beautiful opportunities. The children of Israel missed on the beautiful opportunity of going to Canaan, the place of milk and honey, the land of milk and honey. So one of the mistakes that we do as people while we are waiting is that we, we complain. But that's not all. Another thing that we do is that while we are waiting, we want to take matters into our own hands. We want to take matters into our own hands. In Isaiah chapter 7, we, we read about King Ahaz. King Ahaz is king of Judah. And he, he had reports that the king of Syria and the king of, of, North, of Northern uh, Thai, which is it's Northern Thai, but uh, but, uh, Northern, Kingdom. Northern Kingdom, which is Jerusalem, Samaria, yeah. Samaria, sorry. They, they are coming to, to attack him. As they are coming to attack his land, he, he, he was impatient. But God sent Isaiah. He sent Isaiah to come and calm him down. He told him to wait. Just wait. You know, God sometimes tells us to wait. When God says wait, we wait. We don't, we don't, we don't come up with, with our own way of doing. If things don't come your way, just wait. Sometimes we want to take matters into our own hands. If, if you don't get the, 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 the right one, you go out and you make a mistake and, and you bring some. But we should wait. Sometimes, if, if you are not becoming rich as we want to, we stay. But we should wait. And God says, this still and not at all. So we see that these people, did, as they were planning to attack, Isaiah goes to the king, king of Judah. He tells him that God told me to wait, to tell you to wait. This is incredible. I know sometimes we think that God has not tell us to wait, you know, we think that no, God has not told me to wait. Then I can take matters into my own hands. But no, we should wait. And, and as, and as Isaiah tells him, he even went as far as asking for, 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 for his son. He tells him that God, if you don't believe this, God says, ask for his son. But King Ages went on and put as he pleased. He went and asked for, 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 uh, for a Syrian head. And you know what happened? He later paid on. He, he paid for protection. He didn't just pay, but he paid with, with, with the things that belong to the temple, silver and gold. Sometimes, as we take matters into our own hands, we pay with what belongs to God. Sometimes, with our Christianity as well. But we should wait. When God says wait, let us wait. When it's not time, it's not time. God is never late. God is not ever late. But God is on time. We read in, in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 that when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. When the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, and born another woman. God is always on time. Maybe when God has not said it's over, let us wait. And it's not over until God says it's over. Because with God, nothing is impossible. He is the provider. He is the provider. He has been the provider. And he will always be. So when it's not the right time, hold on and wait. Another mistake that we do 
as we are waiting, because we are impatient people, we turn against each other. We live, we live in the world that we think there is scarcity of resources. So we, we, you know, when we are waiting on the queue, I want to jump the queue to go in front, because I may not get uh, what, what is there in front, you know. And we turn against each other while we are waiting. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 15, Paul writes to the Galatians and he tells them that if you keep biting each other and devouring each other, be careful or watch out that you may destroy one another. While we are waiting, let us be patient and let's not turn against each other. We want to be number one, isn't it? I want to be number one. That's the attitude that we have. But patience. It says what kind of attitude you keep while you're waiting. Don't jump the queue. Wait for your turn. Sometimes you, you want to jump the queue and it's not your turn. And when you get there, you get bent. I was thinking when we, when we were waiting for that, that imagine if I just uh, cut the queue and go in front, and when I get there, I, I get bent right in front. Maybe it's not yet ready. <laughs> It's not about who, who, who's first, but in this spirit, it's about finishing the race. As we are sitting here, it's not about who will enter the heaven first, but it's about who will finish the race. And we are on, on the track, isn't it? We are on the track looking to finish the race. <coughs> James goes further in the passage, and he, he gives us two examples of what to do while waiting. The first thing he says, we must learn from the farm. We must learn from the farm. I, I once went to Venga for a week for my, my friends. And this morning he told me that he got something from the farm for me. And I got to share mm -hmm. So we, 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 we learn things from the farmer. Jesus Christ taught about the farmer. The first thing, or one of the parables he taught about the farmer is the parable of the sower. He says a farmer went out and sowed the seed. Uh, I, I can imagine how, how, how the, summer, the, the farmer went out to sow the seed. Uh, when, when I grew up, we, we used to be actively uh, farming in, in, even in my house. My father used to be actively farming. So uh, he, 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 he says he went out to spread the seed. The first seed uh, fell on the road. It fell on the roads and the base of the sky came and devoured the sea. The other one fell on the hard ground. So there was no enough soil to, 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 to grow. So it says it later on died. And the other seed fell on the, on the thorns, among the thorns. And the thorns choked the seed and it died. But it says one seed fell on the good soil and it grew. And it multiplied to hundredfold, to six hundredfold, and also to three hundredfold. We see how, how a farmer operates. We see the attitude of the farmer. And he also tells us, also in the Matthew chapter 13, about the parable of the weeds. He says, a farmer went out to, to sow the seed. And at night, the, the enemy came, also sowed the bad seed. And then in the morning, the, the servants came and asked, Lord, didn't we plant the good seed? Didn't we plant the good seed? And, and, and the Lord said, yes. But the enemy also came and planted the bad seed. And the servants said, let us then uh, pull out this bad seed. He said, no. Let us wait for the time of the harvest. Let them go together and we wait for the harvest. We, we, we see the attitude of the farm. We see how Jesus Christ tells us about the farm. One thing that comes out strongly about the farmer is that the farmer prepares the field. The farmer prepares the field. So, 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 sometimes, as we are waiting, we need to be prepared. As we are waiting in this journey, let us be prepared. He, he, 
prepare the man, the, the, the field. We, need, we also need to prepare our minds and keep the good attitude as we are looking forward to that day that we are going to talk about later on. And the farmer anticipates rain. James tells us that he waits for the heavy rain and the late rain. The farmer waits for the rain. You know, it's, it's interesting because the farmer does not have control over the rain. But the farmer plans and, and knowing that indeed God will provide. That takes faith. The farmer is faithful. He waits for the right time and he waits for the right rain. The farmer knows that whatever I'm planting is going to be produced. Sometimes as we are waiting, like, if you plant the seed there, know that whatever you are planting is going to reproduce. That's what the farmer does as well. Be productive while you are waiting. I am reminded of, of ten virgins. Five of them were prepared and five of them were not prepared. And when the time comes, those that were not prepared, they started to, to prepare while it was that time. And it was impossible to prepare. But let us prepare while we still have time. While we are waiting, let us prepare. And he goes on to teach us about prophets. He says, let us learn from the prophets, the perseverance of the prophets. He even mentions Job. One thing about the prophets is that they knew that they is a reward. If you read in Hebrews chapter 11, it tells us that some of them died without receiving that reward, but they knew that the promise that God gave them, they will eventually receive the promises. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, 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 of Abraham, when, when he was waiting for his son, uh, he, he was waiting patiently for his son. He waited 25 years in order to get his son, the promised son. There are many prophets that we can talk about, but let's speak to, to, to Job now. The perseverance of Job. We can't be patient unless we are really persevering. We need to persevere so that we can be patient. The Bible tells us some of the prophets died without receiving those. Sometimes in life we, we, we've limited our lives to educational qualifications, maybe to a big house, to a car, family, could be relationships, maybe even children or money. That's how we've limited this life. But there's so much more in this life. What about patience? How about being known as someone who's patient? Job is known as someone who is we, we We go through things in this life. We, we, we go through storms, we go through difficulties, we go through, through hunger, we go through, through poverty. We, we, we lack things, we, we, we lack the, 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 the better one, we, we, we lack family. We learn whatever we learn, but we need to persevere because when the time is right, God will provide. There's a day that we're waiting for as we go back to our scripture. The Bible tells us that as we are waiting for that day, let us remember that the Lord is compassionate and merciful. The day that we are talking about is the day that we read in the, in the book of 1st Thessalonians chapter 5. That, that is the day of the Lord. We are waiting for that day and we are here, we are sitting here, we are listening to me because you are waiting for that day. And as we are waiting for that day, we need to, 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 to wait patiently. Because we are waiting for the Lord. And we know that as we go through these things, God is merciful and God is compassionate to 
take us through these difficulties that we are going through while we are waiting for this day. And, and, and this day is so significant for us as the Christians because immediately as we go through the waters of baptism, as we come out of the baptism of the waters of the baptism, we become the new creatures that we are waiting for that day. And, and we go through things, God does not preserve us to go through difficulties while we are waiting for that day. But we know for sure that that day is coming. And as the day comes, we will be relieved from all difficulties of this world. As we go through difficulties now, we know that when that day comes, we will be relieved and we will say, wow, the day has come. The day has come. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I, when I was talking about the song, Brother Gracious, that song we just read, What a Way Like a Man, it's talking about that day. It's telling us that the Lord is coming on that day and is coming with a cloud. And, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 says, For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That day, we are not going to see God's wrath as Christians, but the salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That day, Christians are not going to see God's wrath. Unless, of course, if we need God, then we are going to see God's name. But that is a day that we are looking forward to. And here James says, be patient for that day. I know we will wait too long and we want to take matters into our own hands. We want to do this and that. We want to do this and that and forget about our Lord. But he says, be patient. Don't give up. There's nothing as easy as giving up. You know, you just, you just give up. I just don't give up. It's so easy to give up. But it's not easy to be patient. It's not easy to be patient. But we need to develop this patience. Because on that day, we are going to seek the salvation of the Lord. We are going to, 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 to be taken and we are going to live with God eternally. That's beautiful. Living with God eternally. I don't know how how how, how heaven looks like, but he tells us that there are mansions there in heaven, waiting for us, for Christians, waiting for us, for Christians. Don't be discouraged this morning. Know that there is a day that we are waiting for as Christians, and while we are waiting for this day, we we, we go, go through difficulties. Sometimes we go through night time. You know, there is also night time in this Christianity. It's not only about we, we, we enjoy many things in, in this Christian I mean, it's so beautiful to meet with saints. So beautiful to sing together. There are so many things in this life. And as we are waiting for that day, let us be patient. And persevere. Just like Job. He persevered. And he was rewarded. There is a reward for that day. And Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, as he says, therefore lay up for me a crown of glory in heaven, which the Lord, the righteous Lord, the righteous judge, uh, he will give me, not only me, but also those who love his appearing. And all of you who love his appearing, sitting here, you are waiting for that day that you are going to get this crown of glory. And patiently you are waiting. And we see. Born now, wait like a man. The Lord is coming with love. That's what we do for that. Just say it.